Venerable religious and dear parishioners, I would like to speak about today's saint, Saint Philomena. And you know, every saint is, of course, marvelous, inspiring, known for his or her heroic virtue. But there are some things about Saint Philomena that make her stand out in a particular way. And we should be firmly convinced that God has destined her for our times. Now, she was martyred in the early ages of the church. I believe it was Diocletian who wanted to have her as his wife, probably one of his wives, as pagan custom so often was, or at least it was one of the Roman emperors, and she, of course, rejected it because he was asking her to give up her faith in Jesus Christ and to violate her vow of virginity. And she, of course, would rather go to the death than offend God by those mortal sins of being unfaithful to our Lord, being unfaithful to her vow of virginity. Like so many other martyrs of that era, she was buried and simply not known about for centuries upon centuries. There are many martyrs like that. St. Alphonsus Liguori estimates that in the first three centuries of the church, there were between 8 and 11 million martyrs who died for the faith. And St. Philomena is certainly among them. But here's what makes her, in a very special way, unique. After 15 centuries plus of being in complete obscurity, being unknown, her relics were discovered. You see, underneath Rome, there are the catacombs. They are so extensive that it's hard to estimate the number of miles of subterranean passages that there are under the city of Rome. And catacombs like this are also found under some cities. And the reason it lends itself well to Rome is that much of Rome is built upon limestone, and limestone is perfect for tunneling. Because of the persecutions, that's where many of the early Catholics lived or conducted divine worship or took care of things because they, otherwise the Romans would be just, if they were all out in the open, the Romans would be slaughtering them left and right. So it was a part of keeping the church alive, you might say, that the catacombs were so extensive below the city of Rome. It said, if you wander in there without a rope, you know, actually, of course, the catacombs are closed today. They're, they're, you're not allowed to just go wandering there, but you could easily get lost and die there because it just, there's so many twists and turns, so much length. But this is also where the Catholics were buried, particularly the martyrs. They were taken down there and buried. And so often you'll see in the catacombs, it, it looks like not only do you have the passageway hollowed out from the rock, but then on the sides there's hollowed out spaces long enough and deep enough for a body to be put in there. From the earliest centuries, the Catholic Church has been completely opposed to cremation because it reverences the body that was the temple of the Holy Ghost. To this day, the church absolutely condemns cremation. I know the modern church allows it, but only in, a, in time of plague or war would the church make an exception to that rule of hers. 
treat the body with the proper reverence. And another fascinating aspect about the bodies of so many martyrs being buried in the catacombs is that when the body was put in, there was also a space above it that was hollowed out, and mass would be offered there on top of the, you, know, you might say on the shelf, above where the the relics of the martyrs were. And that was the origin, I am sure, of one of the very important rules for offering Mass, that Mass must always be offered upon the relics of the martyrs. That's the purpose of the altar stone. It's underneath the three linen cloths. We have the relics of martyrs in there, and even when traveling, a priest has to have an altar stone or a Greek corporal, as it's called, with the relics of martyrs sewn into them so that wherever he says Mass, if he has to set it up in a temporary location, the relics of the martyrs are still there. And of course, in the Mass, the greatest martyr of all, the King of Martyrs, is honored, Jesus Christ, who gave his life, who was martyred upon the cross, so that's a reminder of what the Mass is, that in every Mass our Lord mystically dies. He died physically only once, but mystically he dies in every Mass. So getting back to St. Philomena, a good thing that has happened is excavations would take place, explorations, and there's still, I'm sure, many a location that has not been discovered. But St. Philomena's relics were discovered in 1802. They were brought, you know, they were verified with as much, uh, you know, as could be uh, certification, so to speak, or study as could be made. But what happened is that there was an explosion of miracles. So God was saying, even though she's been in this obscurity for at least 15 centuries, I want her known. I want her honored. I want devotion to be practiced to her. And it was Pope Gregory the 16th, and then later on, Pope Pi I believe it was he who authorized the devotion to St. Philomena, and he declared her to be a canonized saint. Now, what's unique about this is, apart from private revelation, there is no historical records of her. But the church, being a true pope being infallible, he can certainly make this determination that she's a canonized saint. And again, the miracles prove it beyond any doubt. What is so telling about the, the changes of Vatican II, and this was in the early 60s, even before Vatican II started, they started to take saints out of the calendar. And guess who was the very first saint to be, and I'm using the word literally here, expunged from the calendar? In other words, what, what does it mean to be expunged? I'm not sure the technical definition, but it sounds like delete without a trace. Who do you think was first on the chopping block, so to speak, to be utterly expunged? Saint Philomena. It shows the modernist bent of what would go on from John the 23rd on. And remember, modernists hate miracles. They don't like miracles. And the excuse given was, well, we don't have the historical documents, so we better just take her out completely. She was called the wonder worker of the 19th century. There were so many miracles. We do know about her from private revelation. There was a nun who was favored with a vision about her, and it was shown to her what kind of a death that she suffered. She was tortured in various ways, 
and we don't have time to go uh, through through that but she showed herself faithful to our lord and again she could have just been in obscurity till this day but god wants this 13 year old girl this heroic saint to inspire all of us especially our young people to be faithful to our lord at any cost How would we ever be martyrs? How would we ever be able to undergo the things that the martyrs went through? Well, it always starts with this. It always starts with being faithful in the little things. As our Lord said, he, he gave us the principle. He who is faithful in little things will then be able to be faithful in the greater things. This is why the, the details, the small things, are so important. It's, it's, you know, the temptation is, well, it's not that important. It's not that big of a deal. And we start to, to, you know, to compromise or start to just whittle away, cut away at the corners, as Father Clement Kubish used to say. Well, then we're not faithful in the little things, and we imperil our ability to be faithful in the greater things. So let us be inspired by St. Philomena to be faithful in the little things and the daily striving for virtue. Grow in your devotion to her. Read about her. There's a little pamphlet here. I'm take, it has a history about her and devotions. Uh, you can't go wrong growing in your appreciation of this heroic virgin martyr of the early church whom God has given to us as a special intercessor for our times. So, St. Philomena, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.